What made you kind of choose to keep Routine Joyen in your repertoire? Since my very first upload on YouTube in January of 2019, you have been asking me to collab with Dr. Mike. Like seriously, to the point that one time I collected all the comments that just said that in a 24 hour period and posted on Instagram and it was outrageous. There were so many. We finally made it happen. Today we're reacting to an episode of Scrubs. He's gonna tell us a little bit about his medical student rotation in OBGYN and also some of his residency training. If you're new here from Dr. Mike's channel, welcome. We are so happy to have you. I post videos every Monday morning about pregnancy and gynecology and a little bit related to parenting. So if you want to stay, hit that subscribe button. If you're just here for Dr. Mike, that's cool. You can just watch this video too. This is season two, episode eight of Scrubs, where they run into the gyno girls. The average resident owes over $100,000 in med school loans and makes about as much as a waiter. So you have to do things to make ends meet. Like you can cover someone's shift. I had more than that when I graduated from medical school and the amount that I had was still considered less than average by quite a bit. You can steal stuff from the hospital. Score. Not that I'm asking you to incriminate yourself, but did you ever steal anything from the hospital so that you could eat? Or did you ever fill your trunk with pudding as a resident? <laughs> no, um, I was fortunately well enough off that I could feed myself. In my hospital, they gave you uh, a card that had a set amount of money on it. For some reason, always lasted the exact amount until the year ended and then it reset. So like the end of the year, I would maybe have enough money to buy a couple more like sports drinks that I could take home with me. So I guess I took some extra sports drinks home. I had a residency friend who, instead of using the money on his card for the cafeteria to eat his meals, would bring a peanut butter and jelly like every day. And then at the end of the month, use the money left on his card to stock up on things like little cartons of milk to take to his house and stock the fridge. Is there one bathroom in this damn place that has toilet paper? Or do I have to start carrying around a basket of leaves? Okay, I mean, honestly, if that's not every single one of us in this pandemic situation right now, I don't know what is. Hey guys. Dino Girls, 12 o'clock. Obstetrics and gynecology is a specialty that's usually dominated by women. About 80% of current OBGYN residents identify as female, and that is just kind of the trend that we've seen over the past probably 10 years. Dr. Reed, I'm Dr. Gerson. We were just wondering if you had any thoughts about your specialty, because we really thank your OBGYN material. I, I can't go with Dr. Gerson because I have to help you, uh, right? Just give me a second, I'm figuring something out. As someone who is 5'2", and look like I hadn't slept in six years when I was a resident, I want to know why they're all so tall, beautiful, and well-rested. <laughs> what was your rotation like as a medical student? I actually didn't have residents. I was in, a, in an area where it was attending run. The attendings I worked with were awesome. They were excited about having students. They allowed us to do a lot and participate in the care of patients. As a family medicine resident, we also do an OB rotation. And the people that I worked with were really diverse. We had all different locations, ethnicities. We had different genders. It was a really good mixed bag so that you could learn everyone's style uh, and really adapt some of the best qualities to yourself so that you could be better at uh, practicing obstetric care. For those watching who aren't aware, when you get out into practice, a lot of times you kind of par down some of what you are trained in to kind of focus on the things that you really want to offer the most. One of the things that often falls out of favor for family practice doctors is the OB and GYN side. So you've told me in the past that you still do, I think, a little bit of GYN in your clinic now. What made you kind of choose to keep routine GYN in your repertoire? I think it's great when a patient can come in for an annual physical exam and we could talk about their vaccines, we can talk about blood pressure, their diabetes, and at the same time perform a pap smear or order a mammogram. The patient is much more likely uh, to get all the things done if it's happening in one place. Moonlighting sucks, but Turk and I make do. Jimmy crack cord, and I don't care. <laughs> Jimmy Crack Corn. I'm laughing at that little girl's face. She's like looking at him completely blank face like, uh, I don't know how to react to you. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. Uh. <laughs> Dr. 
to Dorian. We could use you again tomorrow. They're talking about moonlighting, which is what residents can do to make a little bit of extra money. You finish taking your licensing exam. You can take your last one after you get out of medical school and then you're a fully licensed physician. In order to practice independently, you have to go on and do a residency in whatever specialty you decide to do. I went into OBGYN, which is a four-year residency. Mike went into family practice, which is a three-year residency. But during that time, while you're fully licensed, but still training to work in whatever specialty that you would like to work in, you can do independent shifts for extra money at places who are really strapped for physicians, usually rural places. A lot of residency programs don't allow their residents to moonlight. Mine didn't, so I never had the opportunity to do this. Did your program let you do any moonlighting or anything like that when you were a resident? It was actually offered to us to moonlight at one of the nursing facilities that our hospital is associated with. And I never took my hospital up on that offer. But what I did moonlight was covering sports games. Because I had a huge interest in sports medicine, being an athlete myself, I said, I wanna participate in as many of these as possible. So I've covered high school, college games, uh, football, soccer, uh, even MMA once, and it's truly a fantastic experience. Anytime you can step outside of your comfort zone, especially if you're being monitored by a superior, do it, do it, do it, do it. I just wanted you to know, sir, that I faced up to those gyno girls with a very strong and clear, no thank you. Yes, I heard about your note. <laughs> the, the, the point is that I'm out. I think that in this show, they're supposed to be residents. And after you have finished medical school, your next year, you are a resident. And that's usually in whatever field you're going to go into. So this isn't really accurate to real life where they would be choosing a specialty at this point. Did Dr. Gerson ever contact you? You told her to talk to me? She went to med school with a colleague at my hospital. Dad, why are you so set on me being an OBGYN? I don't know what her dad's specialty is, but I find it kind of weird that he wants her to go into OBGYN so bad. A lot of people try to convince me not to go into this field because your work-life balance can be very hard to achieve, especially if you have kids but it's possible and I knew it was possible and I knew I loved this field and wanted to do it. Your highest income potential as a female physician is in obstetrics. But I don't really like that he said your highest income potential as a female physician is in obstetrics because one, it implies that there are fields you can't do because you're a female, which is just bananas. And then two, it's not really accurate. Every surgical specialty gets reimbursed better than obstetrics for comparable procedures, not to mention the incredibly high cost of malpractice. Don't you think that maybe it's time that you left those sort of things up to me? I paid for your college, your medical school, your car, and now your apartment and all your living expenses. I'd have to say no. Even though I really appreciate everything that you've given me, it's my life. But stop complaining and enjoy your damn meal. I like that at the end there, she decided to stand up for herself. Being overly encouraged to go into a particular field if that's not really what you want to do is a recipe for burnout and unhappiness. I think on your channel, you've mentioned that your dad is a physician. Did your parents or your dad in particular have any strong feelings about whether or not you should go into medicine or what specialty you should choose. You know, it's funny. My dad would always talk up medicine, how much he loved it and how special of a field it was. But at the same time, he would give me the truth and he would tell me, look, reimbursements are dropping. It's very difficult to get money out of insurance companies. I struggle a lot with this. Maybe you don't want to do this. Maybe you should go into business and do well for yourself. And he never forced me to go into medicine, but he did force me to get a proper education. I mean, I could stay out late at night. I could hang out with friends. There were no real strict rules with that as long as I was available by phone or by pager. Oh my God, I'm aging myself. Um, <laughs> and uh, the only thing he would say is you have to maintain a high average. So you had a pager that your parents contacted you on? Yeah, yeah like I remember when I was in fifth and sixth grade. I had a Motorola pager, one of those really small ones, and it would vibrate and I would have to call my dad back. I feel like only a physician parent would come up with something like that. <laughs> You're right. All right now, who wants a refill? God, I can't afford this place. Elliot, I'm $130,000 in debt. You're gonna be all right. <laughs> in a previous video, I asked you guys who I should collab with when I paid off my med school loans, and we are so close, so close to loan repayment, you guys. Oh my gosh. What should I do for a celebratory video? What should I do 
for a celebratory video when I pay off my med school loans. I know, I wanna collab with someone great. I actually paid them off last year. June 19th, 2019, debt free. I thought there was gonna be confetti on the screen or something. I think very fittingly, our first collab is with Dr. Mike. The video on his channel is us playing Medical Never Have I Ever as a CDC Foundation fundraiser, and it's really funny and really fun, and I would love for you to go watch it. Really strange from a patient's body. Um. <laughs> Dr. Jones, this is how the game's gonna work. If we ever did whatever the Never Have I Ever states, we're gonna raise our hands. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.